So yeah, yeah um, if you're open to answering a couple questions for the next 10 or 15 minutes or so, Father. Um, yes. So Charlotte asks, how would you explain to an atheist why God is? Why God is? Well, look, I tell you, first of all, it's not your business to convert people. Okay, I'll just say, say that to you. It's your business to sow seeds. Okay, and the best way to sow seeds is to let people see you love Jesus. I can argue, I, I am a person of faith, but I can argue myself out of faith through reason. So it's not, there is ways of reasoning into faith and reasoning out, but ultimately it's about encounter. If you have seen something and experienced something, there's no way anyone can convince you otherwise, okay? If you actually have experienced that. And so let people, first of all, live out your experience of the faith and let people see that. Let people come to that. That's one. But before that, the most important thing is pray for people. Pray that their hearts may be softened. Pray that they may come to this encounter with Jesus. Because you can be good at, at, at arguing and getting people into the faith. But just as easily as they can get argued in, they can get argued out without an encounter. So this is, this is where it has to start with people seeing your love for Jesus. And at the end of the day, them looking at you and saying, I want what she has. I want what he has. So this is where our business is in, in, in being this witness. Think about Jesus as well, okay? Jesus never converted the masses, okay? He converted 11, I would say 12, but he sort of failed with one. And it was those 11 that changed the whole world. So we're not, don't be despaired if you, all your friends don't believe in Jesus. Don't be despaired if all your youth group don't believe in Jesus. At the end of the day, it's one soul at a time that are influenced through community, through people seeing the love that you have for Jesus and them desiring what you have. But always, once they desire that, point them to Jesus, not to yourself. Always point to Jesus. Thanks, Father. Um, so the next question is from Mike B. And he asked, who, who is your favorite saint? Well, my favorite saint is a saint you mightn't have heard of. His name is St. Vincent Ferrer. Um, so St. Vincent was a guy who was a miracle worker. He was just performing one miracle after the other to the point where his bishop stopped him from performing miracles. You know, he was raising people from the dead. He was stopping people from falling off buildings. He was just one miracle after the other. Um, and I, so I, I just love his, his mountain moving faith, but I love also that he obeyed the bishop to even when the bishop told him to stop God's work, in that sense, the, the supernatural God's work. Um, eventually he did come back to that, but it, yeah, it, sometimes we don't understand the ways of God. And sometimes God asks us in obedience as well to do things that we don't see as the will of God. But at the end of the day, yeah, I see in him just a trust in the Lord and a love for the Lord, not even for evangelization, but for, for uh, yeah, his love for Jesus. Thank you. Uh, Bosco asks, what's Malta like? <laughs> well, Malta is a beautiful place. You just Google Malta, Malta beaches. It's amazing. I mean, it's just the most underrated place ever. It's just, um, it's a place, it's actually mentioned in the Bible, Acts 28. There's a whole chapter in the Bible about Malta. Canada has no mention. Uh, the United <laughs> States has no mention. Uh, Australia has no mention. Uh, but, <laughs> but Malta has a whole chapter. It's a place of, of incredible faith. It's uh, a people, uh, a lot of religion, a lot of churches, 365 churches in Malta, population 400,000. It's 14 kilometers by 22 kilometers. Tiny, tiny island, but an island that has impacted the world in so many ways. Thank you, Father. So the next question is from Anna, and she asks, when was your first encounter with Jesus? Well, my first real encounter with Jesus was when I was 16, um, almost 17 years old. It was a time, I write, that's what I write about in my book, actually. Um, and it's a, a time when I was at the end of myself, where I was addicted, where I was lost, I was depressed, I was suicidal. And there, um, in sort of this place of desperation, I had nowhere else to turn but to Jesus. And my encounter came in three stages. I think it was the first time. First was my parents praying for me, not giving up on me. The second thing was entering into a community of people who believed and who I, I found a sense of home and hope. And, but the third was the, when they pointed me to Jesus. 
and and when they prayed with me i just had this experience of god's love and that has changed me forever but without the community without the prayer the experience would have come and gone it would have just been a, a, a sort of a wow moment but nothing more than that thank you father so the next question is from father paul and he asks how has covid affected your ministry both the good and the bad well my ministry has 100% been affected because I am an itinerant preacher. So that's what I do. I last year I was on a plane 300 times. So I, I spoke in front of 1.6 million people last year. So it's just, and then all of a sudden I'm speaking in front of no one, like in front of a computer screen. And, but um, I run a non for profit organization, which is called FRG Ministry International. Um, and we run this ministry and we reach to millions of people, to schools, we create content. And since everything has gone online, um, our ministry has blown up. Uh, we've had an incredible response. I went from myself and my assistant, now we're seven staff. Um, and it's just, and we're full time, we're all crazy, not knowing how we're going to cope with the amount of work as well. Um, we're doing a lot more work with a lot less resources as well. But God provides and God shows us, shows us the way. And it's just amazing how we can impact lives. We take, God closes one door, but he slams another door open um, when, if we continue to trust in him. So the next question is from Martin, and he asks, what seeds of hope have you seen at this time? How can we remain hopeful at this time? Well, for me as an introvert, it's easy for me to see the positives. Um, and for those who are frustrated and anxious and like need to get out, it's much more difficult. I do appreciate that. But I, I and the countless amount of, uh, let's say, the, mo I'm gonna, the most important thing is that people are realizing what is, what is not necessary. What is not necessary. And I think this has been such a beautiful fruit in my own life, just seeing that... Um, the pressure to go to schools, the pressure to sing in front of people, the pressure to perform has fizzled out, you know, like at the end of the day, what does it matter? God doesn't need me. He wants me, but he doesn't need me. And I, this is one of the things, one of the things I've seen all, all over YouTube, all over um, Facebook, all over social media is that people at the end of the day are looking to other people, not things and not um, less on things that are superficial. So that's one of the, um, several fruit that we're seeing. Thanks, Father. Uh, the Emmy asks, could you please describe to us your creative process with writing your songs? Well, I, there are several um, processes I use, but one of the easiest process, one of the most common process I use is a process called harmonic bed. Okay, so what it is, is just using three, say I'm writing a song, I have lyrics, usually I'm stewing over them, what's on my heart or where do I want to go? And so I take a harmonic bed, let's say three chords, a G, C, D, and an E minor, and I keep playing through those. And I start singing oohs and ahs to that. And then eventually a melody comes up and I, then I, I start with a basic melody and then I start writing my lyrics. I start trying to express my lyrics. Um, I sometimes just write lyrics. Sometimes I use it through word association. I write the topic and then I point out words that are associated with that word and then again another circle words that are associated with those words and then create nonsensical sentences and then eventually i start and then i can start writing my lyrics with these sentences that don't really make sense but eventually cr are crafted together it's one of the ways there's the story um, imagining a story and writing about that there are hundreds of ways we can use it. but i'm doing a lot of as well of co-writing at the moment which i find very refreshing because it's getting me out of my comfort zone of writing. Thanks, Father. Um, several others have asked, so I'm just going to do like a culmination. What is your favorite exercise or like what do you like to do during workouts essentially? Well, I tell you what, I am so missing the gym. I'm emailing my gym every day. They're sick of me. They're sick of me. Um, it's opening on Monday and they're coming out with like a, a waiting list. I'm going to be there like the first. It's like when you're uh, of trying to book in a concert, you know, I'm going to be there waiting the minute it opens. I'm going to book six o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, my favorite exercise, I suppose, is weightlifting. I love weightlifting and I've really missed that here. I have done calisthenics uh, over here, but it's just not the same for me. Um, I'm just, 
even though I'm, I've maintained my weight, I've lost my muscle mass and I'm really disappointed, but I'm going to get it again. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to get back. But I'd say weightlifting, um, I, I, from, I don't have a particular favorite bench press or leg press or whatever. I just, um, I love I'm challenging myself with weights. Um, Grace asks, what advice can you give to us if you're drifting out of the faith? Well, I would say two things, um, several things, but two things. Is one, immerse yourself in community, even if the community is hypocritical, even if the community is boring, even if the community seems irrelevant. Because I'm telling you, the first thing the devil is going to do is to take you away from the community. He's going to take you um, like a piece of coal in a fire. He'll take it out of the fire and the coal will think they're still on fire, but eventually they're turned to dust before they could even know. And not only that, you, without community, there isn't the flame that is useful, the flame that's useful to cook the um, tofu if you're vegetarian or vegan or steak if you're not, you know? And so uh, it, you, you need to stay in the community. That's one, so prayer and community. But the second thing is prayer as well. Even if you don't know what to pray, even if you don't know what to say, just sometimes my prayer is, is nothing but just being generous with God. God, I'm going to give you these next 10 minutes. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want you to talk to me. I'm just going to stay here for 10 minutes. And, and, and sometimes that's what prayer is. It's just being generous with God. And sometimes you have to be generous for weeks, other times for years. Other times you, you don't, the generosity doesn't, it doesn't feel like being generous because you feel like you're being blessed more than you're giving. But for some, it does take a lot of generosity. So to keep your faith, I'd say you need to be generous with community and you need to be generous in prayer. Mike P asks, if I wrote a song, can I get your feedback sometime? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Look, I, yes, send it through social media. I think that's the best way. That's Instagram or um, Facebook. That's the way, place I can answer most. Um, I, I will, every song that is sent to me, which I get quite a few, um, I, I listen to and I give, but I'm, I'm pretty brutal. So if you, it depends how, tell me, tell me how, what level from one to 10 honesty you want from me. Mm -hmm. Um, so Bosco asks, have you ever dealt with stage fright? And if so, how do you deal with it? I deal with stage fright all the time, all the time. I celebrate mass every day and every time I feel like I'm going to feel sick. Uh, there are times I, I, I'm terrified, absolutely terrified. And my band know, for example, to leave me alone before a performance because I pace like mad and I just feel like I'm going to feel sick. Um, but I do it anyway. I, I tell you, one of the things I often say is that like, is, is do it scared. And because that's the way I live every single day. I'm afraid, but I'm not going to let fear have the final say. I'm going to go forward and afraid. I'm going to do it afraid. I'm going to do it scared. Once I get onto the stage, then I start communicating. I start um, engaging with my content and I start engaging with people and it becomes easier. But to get onto that stage is really difficult. I, I, by the grace of God, have the ability to play a guitar. So that's a barrier for me. So I know that when all else fails, I can just pick up the guitar and sing a song um, when it comes to speaking. But uh, also creating a barrier, for example, having a lectern, having something um, that you a desk or something you can stand behind when you, if you're feeling extraordinarily nervous. Um, <laughs> the question that everyone else wants to know about the gym, um, how much can you bench for? <laughs> It's in kilos, isn't it? Like, yeah. So I do, well, I wouldn't say now, probably now it will be less, but the most recent, my recent personal best was on free weight was one, two reps on 150 kilos. But I wouldn't dare do that now, it would crush me. So <laughs> give me a few, couple of months to get back into it again. And then, yeah. Um, Charlene asks, outside of the gym, what else are you looking forward to? Or like when COVID is over, what are you looking forward to once this is all over? Well, yes, I'm looking forward to the community. I'm looking forward to celebrating mass with the community, but I think that will be quite a real long while. I have been celebrating mass with like 20 people every day and, and so on and so forth, but I'm looking forward to the extended community to come in. Um, it, it, for that to come back but also i think i'm looking forward to getting back into schools you know to speaking at schools again yeah so that's yeah that's a 
something I'm, I'm pretty excited about and to getting to Vancouver again. So, <laughs> and then, yeah, so um, our ending, so we're coming to the conclusion of just questions. So how can we pray for you, Father? So our question for you, and then so that you can go back at yeah. How can we pray for you? Uh, well, I just want, I just pray um, that I love Jesus more. And I just also pray for you that you love Jesus more. But when I say love Jesus more, I'm not talking about feeling. I'm talking about being generous with God, with um, being generous in, in, in a life of, of holiness, of purity, generous in a life of, of selflessness. Um, and so I always need prayer for that, as we all do. So, yeah, you just pray for me for that and I'll pray for you also.